I thought I grew my business fast, but Josh Fields grew his to 50 plus units in just about two years. And guess what? Zero dollars of marketing. He's going to show you exactly how he did that here on the Fearless Investor Podcast. Hey guys, welcome into the Fearless Investor Podcast. You are listening to me, Kyle Stanley. Excited to have you listening in. As always, if you are not subscribed to the podcast or YouTube channel, please do. If you're watching on YouTube, drop a comment. If you are listening on the podcast, please leave us a review. That helps out tremendously to help get our name out so that more people can learn how to do Airbnb and short-term rentals the right way. Now, speaking of doing it the right way, Josh Fields definitely is doing that. He's in Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama, and he is building a business that is growing at a crazy high rate, but the quality at which it's growing is staying extremely high. He's actually saying no to more people than he's saying yes to from a co-hosting standpoint. And then he also has a fund that he's built up to about 14 units that he and partners own. And they also have a handful of arbitrages as well. But one of the things that I liked is that Josh has not spent any money on marketing, not a single dollar. And so that in itself lends me to wonder like, hey, how are you doing that? And so that's what we talk about today here on the Fearless Investor Podcast. Let's get to it right now and hear straight from the horse's mouth, Josh right now on the Fearless Investor Podcast. Hey guys, welcome into another episode of the Fearless Investor Podcast. And we have Josh Fields on here today from Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, Josh is our very own, one of our very own Six Figure Formula members, and he's killing it out there with over 50 properties. Uh, Josh, welcome in, man, and congrats on the success. Hey man, I, again, appreciate, uh, appreciate you having me here and excited to uh, share a little bit today with the audience. And even coming live from one of your Airbnbs, right? That's right. Yeah, we're uh, <laughs> we're live and local here, and uh, figured I'd have the opportunity to to drop in, do some inspections, uh, you know, some pop in surprise inspections after we uh, after we wrap up here today. Just did one of those myself. I never do those. I I did the one today, and uh, we're changing some things with the team after seeing that. <laughs> so sure, sure, <laughs> it's good. It's good to put eyes on the valuable to you know yeah. stay on the front lines uh, every now and then. So. It, Exactly. All right. Well, here live in our six figure formula community, um, ready for people to start asking you questions and hearing how you're going to, how you've been building your business. But also if you're watching this live, um, welcome in. If you're watching this recorded, uh, the way that you definitely want to take a look at this in the future is by being here live with the six figure formula community. You can check that out at fearlesskyle.com forward slash six FF. So Josh, uh, let's get started here. What's your craziest Airbnb story with over 50 properties? I'm sure you've got a, a doozy for us. Well, uh, probably had to be a, 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 a guest that came to us from Airbnb that turned into a uh, direct booking. Um, long story short, their house had been knocked down by a tornado. Uh, they were looking to rehome their family from an insurance rental. Um, and you know, long story short, uh, they had uh, flooded a uh, a toilet. Ended up uh, coming down into the kitchen below about thirty six hundred dollars worth of damage or so, and um, oh, wow. you know, really didn't feel like they were responsible for it. Even though we found some uh, these quote unquote flushable wipes uh, that aren't flushable. Oh boy! <laughs> and so uh, you know, just you live and you learn. Uh, that was. Uh, that was a little earlier on and quite honestly uh you know it wasn't anything you were going to catch with a background check or anything uh, yeah. of that nature but because of that you know we're looking to institute um you know obviously we've got great insurance on the properties already make sure you have insurance on every single one of your properties heads up um this airbnb coverage won't won't do it for you uh, right. but secondly um instituting you know something that would be able to cover our deductible uh, so we actually didn't even claim it on, on coverage, but, uh, I'm trying to work it out with a guest. So that's, uh, out of all of our experiences, that's probably been the, you know, the, the one that's got us so far. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. Well, Hey, that that's pretty tame for $3,600. I I've heard of some, some worse ones, but especially with sure, 50 plus sure. properties, you know, it could be a lot worse. So I'm, I'm happy to hear that that's the, the craziest that you've had so far. Um, uh, so Josh, give people a little bit of an overview. I, I already mentioned 50 properties, but um, how quickly did you get to 50? Are they 
all ones that you manage? Is it co-hosts? Is it arbitrage? What Give us kind of the scope of your entire business. You know, a little bit of all of the above. We've got uh, we've got some that we arbitrage. That's actually how we started out. I'm sure we'll get into that. Um, we uh, we've got uh, quite a few that we manage, and then we've got I don't know roughly 14 or so that we own um, as a part of a, a real estate investment uh, firm here in uh, the Montgomery area. And uh, you know, as far as how long it took, you know, I'd say. Because it, you know, we don't have this uh, huge marketing budget. It probably took us a little longer uh, than some other folks. Um, you know, I think we're right there at about a year and a half or so. Um, uh, almost, yeah, I'd, I'd say more like two years uh, before we hit that mark. And um, and really, the other part about it is the fact that we don't take on everything. We actually turn down more than we take on. Um, you know, which is I feel like it's really helped our business. Um, and really helps us retain uh, our brand, which is, again, one of the most valuable things the business owns at this point. I, I like how you made it sound like it a year and a half or two years to get 50 properties is a long time. <laughs> that's that's quick, brother. Sure. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, it's uh, uh, we, we've, uh, again, we feel like with our brand, with the uh, the customer service level that we have, the, you know, I guess the super host status helps it out on Airbnb, but really just being able to serve our guests uh, at a high level, uh, be able to, you know, do some interior design. I don't take any credit for that. I uh, don't have much of an eye for that. I've got people for that. But, um, you know, we just had quite a few folks look at us and say, man, you know, we like what you're doing. And, uh, the processes that we've put in place allowed us to be able to scale at a at a high level without having to go back and right. reinvent the wheel. And so uh, I'm a big process guy as well. And, um, you know, get you to think for some of that as well. Well, cool. I, so we're going back to kind of like, as you were getting started, did you have a real estate background or what were you doing before this? No, I didn't. I was in uh, financial advising. Um, working mainly with uh, business owners, um, you know, in the uh, in the insurance space and in the, uh, of course, investment world, uh, licensed stockbroker and, you know, all that was well and good. Um, started this business on the side. We had some uh, money that was building up in life insurance policies with the way that we have uh, structured those. Um, and, you know, just said, I think this will be a great opportunity for us to build this uh, secondary business on the side. And, you know, uh, we started off with two arbitrage properties and, and really just started running with it. Uh, had it I've got a great uh, real estate networking group that has really helped us grow our business as well. And, uh, uh, you know, certainly be glad to talk about that, you know, in the marketing. Yeah. When it comes to it. I definitely want to get to that. I, I'm curious, are you still doing the financial advising or is, is that at the wayside now? No, we'll do some consulting, uh, you know, for individuals, um, you know, still wanted to be able to service our clients and hand some of those off. Um, uh, but really have stepped into real estate full time, you know, as a result of uh, the success that we've had and, um, you know, just very, humble and, and grateful uh, for the opportunity. So you're accumulating this, this money through, it sounds like probably like an infinite banking policy. Is that what the, the life insurance was? Yes, sir. Yeah, cool. that's a, uh, essentially exactly right. And uh, used to, to build those for folks, uh, built it for my family. Obviously we 100% believe in it. And uh, uh, again, just had some, had some uh, cash values building up, said, man, you know, the policy, what it does is, is all right itself, but Hey, yeah. if we can, uh, you know, if we have an opportunity to borrow against this and, and really, uh, blow our returns out of the water, Absolutely. you know, we'll take it. So guys, we're not going to talk about what an infinite banking policy is right now. Cause we've already done a lot of, uh, talks and interviews about that. So if you just go on this YouTube channel or the podcast and just search infinite banking, you're going to see, uh, a lot of different interviews that we've done about that and you can learn all about it. Uh, but, Josh, you've got this money saved up. It's starting to accumulate. And then you've also got this 
full time. Let's let's call it what it is. I mean, that's a, that's a stressful business being in in financial advising, right? Like you're in charge of other people's money, and and you make this decision that hey, I want to start this kind of thing on the side and put my money to to use. What what all went into that decision, especially knowing just how much time it is in the beginning when you're starting a, a you know a real estate Airbnb business. Was there any sort of like, hey, will this take away from the financial advising or was was this going to be an exit strategy? Like, I just wanted to know what the plan was and what maybe were some of the the, the conversations that went into saying, let's let's do this thing. You know, we had uh, we started out, I actually uh, heard of I was already doing infinite banking, but it heard, uh, you know, of the uh, arbitrage model. Uh, they're on a podcast uh, that I believe some other uh, 6FF members are, are uh, part of, and uh, they're in the Birmingham area. Uh, I love those guys. And, um, you know, I had, had introduced the arbitrage model. Hey, this is something that we're considering getting into with, uh, you know, some of the uh, cash values for our clientele uh, that we would advise on something like this. You know, I approached my wife and said, hey, this actually makes a lot of sense folks are willing to pay uh this nightly rate versus what we're having to pay in a lease uh there may be some margin there that uh that we can work with again we started out with two units and uh, you know as much research as we've done um you know cleaning the units at that point having to leave in the middle of the day uh to run across town literally across town from our office and uh and clean and and man inevitably uh you learn the hard way that uh mm. the cleans about 90 percent of the time are going to be a certain level of uh, dirty or cleanliness if you will and then uh you show up two hours before checkout time thinking this is going to be a normal clean and it's not <laughs> so yeah uh, you know uh, we had to learn the hard way uh from a same day check-in standpoint that hey man i'm gonna have to uh, ball up, get there a little earlier, and just plan to work half the day cleaning the property. Um, and we learned pretty quick that, uh, you know, hey, this has got the opportunity to produce some real income. Uh, you know, I do appreciate the opportunity to learn uh, and clean my own units, um, at least there initially, uh, you know, and thought about, hey, I I think it, although I'm charging for a cleaning fee, and I, and I was charging for my time, uh, I really think that uh, we can continue to scale this and, um, you know, we're going to have to bring on some cleaners. So, yeah, I uh, was fortunate that uh, we got plugged in with some good folks here in the Montgomery area. Um, you know, initially, again, it it was really just meant as a side business that we can generate some income, pull it back, you know, to the infinite banking policy and then just rinse and repeat. Um, yeah. And uh, we did that for our first seven arbitrage units. And nice. um, and then word got out, you know. So, yeah. Uh, well, and, and that's that's a good transition there. So you're, you're getting that proof of concept. You're seeing it work. And you're also starting to see like, hey, if I really want to do this thing, I got to hire some good people to take over what I'm doing. Because now sounds like you started getting some people knocking on your door and saying, hey, Josh, how do I do this? So talk about that. Like what was... Maybe what was that first moment or first phone call or first conversation that you realized like, hey, I, I can I can do this for other people and really take this thing to the next level? Well, I mentioned uh, we had a real estate networking group uh, mm -hmm. here locally uh, would really encourage folks to get plugged in to their local chapter of, of again, an investment group. Um, not only will you encounter uh, other short term, you know, rental operators in there, but really just all aspects of real estate um, before coming to, you know, real estate from financial advising, uh, you know, really that networking group had opened our eyes to all the benefits, um, you know, from a real estate perspective, uh, you'd run into different investors uh, quite often in the financial advising space, but um, had an opportunity again to, to really delve in uh, through that networking group you know, just sharing the testimony. Uh, hey guys, this is something that uh, I'll be glad to share our, you know, our testimony. Uh, um, if anybody needs any, you know, really just 
the, the group, I guess, had given us so much. It was really just an opportunity to share uh, about what short-term rentals had done for us. Um, it was around that time that I was considering stepping into it full-time. And, you know, again, just the opportunity, um, you know, within our local market. Uh, and, and through that networking group, we developed several contacts and relationships that just said, hey, I, you know, I've got three or four here. I've got, I'm just starting out with one over here. Can I bounce a few ideas off of you, ask some questions? You know, I've got the the mentality that a, a candle that lights another candle loses nothing in return. And so mm. I didn't mind sharing, um, you know, well, here's what I would do in that situation. Or, um, you know, here's how I would maybe change your listing around a little bit to uh, help the decor, make the marketing more effective. Uh, and that really is so important. I know you cover that in your course as well. Um, and, you know, eventually folks just said, you know what, this is so much more that goes into short-term rental and strategy and, uh, and getting the guest in and communicating, man, I didn't realize it. You're already doing it. Uh, how much can I pay you to just take this off my hands? So, uh, it, like I said, it was around that same time that, um, uh, that made that consideration. That's, I mean, I'm, I'm smiling over here because like what you're saying is exactly the, the route that I took as well. When you called it a uh, light, lighting another candle loses nothing. I'm going to steal that from you because that's good. <laughs> but I usually just would call that an abundance mindset and giving away with out expecting right. anything in return. And you just know it's going to come back tenfold. And it was, was that like, you know, I want to, I want to stay there for a second because did you expect people to eventually come back to you and say, well, this is going to be too much work or did you just say, no, I'm just going to give away this information and, and just see what happens. You know, I, I was criticized by a few folks, you know, in the industry, I, I had approached a gentleman uh, who at the time was the largest operator here. I think he had six um, here in the city and, um, you know, when I first got into it, said, hey, I'm looking at doing this, you know, uh, can I bounce, can I take you to lunch? And uh, we laugh about it now. We, you know, we, I know just about everybody here uh, in the industry, in the city, uh, at least folks with any, any scale. And, uh, you know, he was very tight lipped in that conversation. I said, you know, I just, I don't, I don't see really how you benefit from, you know, just, uh, just again, that mentality. And so, yeah. Uh, you know, people thought I was building my own competition. Um, having said that, I know that we differentiate our rentals uh, through whether it's through customer service, mm -hmm. you know, through our interior design, um, through the location that we decide. Uh, you know, so many folks are just wanting to go get those first properties um, that they're willing to sacrifice on on some of those things and. You know, it's just as fortunate we we just hey that just wasn't in our business model. Mm. So, uh, but yeah, we our our network has really grown here locally. We've got a local Facebook group that we're admins of. Gives us an opportunity again to bounce ideas off of each other, uh, share different events going on in town, um, or hey, don't rent to these guys. They yeah they uh, they flooded my apartment. You know, so. Okay. Uh, uh, having said that, um, you know, it really is uh, uh, matter of fact, uh, this Tuesday, what was it last night? We went to that meeting and, you know, I wasn't the speaker, but I had five or six people, you know, just come up to me. Hey, man, don't let that guy get out of the room without talking to him. Uh, and just, again, new folks coming in. Hey, I'm, somebody told me about subleasing. What, you know, what's that about? What? So, uh, cool. you know. Handing out business cards, giving out my number, and and really just looking to be a resource, really wherever we can. And and again, fortunately, it has, you know, I feel like it has paid off. How did you find this group? It's actually a client of mine on the the uh, financial side. Um, he's a CPA, but he's also got twenty rental homes here. And he he was, hey man, let me invite you out to the group. Um, I met him through another networking group. So it really is, you know, just getting plugged in. Um, you know, again, 
uh, I was obviously I was in financial advising when I joined that networking group and uh, it was local BNI group. If you're familiar with uh, BNI, I am. And, yeah. um, you know, through that, it has really propelled, you know, so many other things and in, in different avenues. Uh, so I'm very grateful for the organization and, um, you know, again, uh, for the the real estate group we've got different attorneys that speak of course different cpas um uh you know different uh obviously different investors different landlords uh different property management companies wholesalers uh, get really just have an opportunity to learn from the experts in their field i've presented on on short-term rentals so uh, you know again it helps to see you know, present yourself as a as an expert in the field, and I think once you do that, folks realize that hey, they're this is not simply throwing something on Airbnb and putting a bed in your room and taking some pictures with a cell phone. It's a little bit more that goes into it. So, like the three things I'm hearing here is you got to find the right group that has the niche that could be potentially your clients, right? Like these, a lot of these people have become your clients now. Um, you become the expert at something. Yours is short-term rentals. And then you essentially give away value for free, just giving away information, having free conversations. And eventually you've got 50 plus units and uh, and, and a fund growing for, for the ones that you own. Uh, is there so, any missing piece there or, or is it just as simple as that? You know, I would, I would also add that when you're going for a networking don't ask for your direct referral, uh, meaning that, you know, the my customers are, uh, I guess the, the folks that benefit from me the most are the guests that come and stay. While we always love those referrals for family members or for individuals that come into town, um, you know, for a variety of reasons, it's really the the folks who can play connector to to those guests is really who we're looking referrals to. So, um, you know, the opportunity to represent more properties uh, is always a, you know, a great thing to have. Um, we're, again, we're really trying to build our direct uh, booking channel. And as much as, again, we'd like to, to have folks come directly to our website, we're really going after the referrals uh, or, or the, I guess the connectors that connect us with those folks from an insurance perspective, from a, uh, you know, a corporate rental perspective, travel agents, insurance agents, uh, and claims adjusters, uh, the folks who handle the travel nurses at the hospital. So, um, you know, again, through that, you, you've got an opportunity to say, Hey, we've got a, we've got a differentiated business model here that we don't have to rely just on these, this one platform to bring us all the business Absolutely. unlike uh you know some other operators here in the city uh they know that they're going to get a you know a professional looking property uh when we're done with it and um again stepping off into it full time has allowed us to spend you know more time on honing our our presentation on our message awesome. and um and really again trying to make sure that the properties that we take on are are the ones that really represent our brand in the right way yeah and I, you keep on mentioning that and i want to kind of talk about that i think it's really unique that what you mentioned there right when people were saying hey you're you're building up your competition you kind of responded with well we're on another level right we've got different we've got higher customer service we got higher quality properties kind of like just tell me what what is your brand what is josh's company's brand and how how has that helped you to decide what types of properties or what types of maybe even principles in the business that you have taken on to match that brand i think from the beginning it was always uh, the message that we wanted to convey was do would would we want to stay in this property you know i've got uh young children um uh, I'm married and, you know, would we feel comfortable in this area? Uh, we knew that uh, my wife is in healthcare, So we knew that, um, you know, those connections to the nursing market were going to be there, especially around, uh, you know, the, the COVID recovery. Uh, really, 
asked ourselves, can we, with this, with this property, uh, we want to give off a, you know, a, a luxury fill, you know, and so uh, at a, at a quote unquote, an apartment price, um, you know, so even all the way down to the branding, the logo, uh, you know, we went with things that would exude, um, uh, you know, luxury. We've got suites in the name Dreamline Suites. Um, and really just wanted to make sure that, you know, again, all the way down to the marketing, the photos that we take. Um, we want to we really would like to make sure that our guest has a great experience. And it's part of the golden rule. Hey, do unto your guests as you would uh, want done to you. So uh, again, if I go to another property now, stay in another Airbnb, I typically am not beating up the other host because they don't have the wine bottles or they don't have the, you know, the, the welcome gifts or the, you know, some of the things that come standard, I guess I should say in our rentals. Um, um, they may not necessarily have the, you know, the hundred percent cotton sheets or the, you know, the, the Turkish uh, cotton towels or the, you know, the, the uh, just again, some of the amenities, I guess, some of the extras that we provide. Um, and again, having said that, really just wanted it to, to build a brand around somewhere that I could go and feel comfortable. Uh, we we used to, and I, and I can't say that we do it much anymore. We're growing at a pretty high clip here, but we always uh, we started out having the model that we always wanted to stay at least a night or two in each of our properties just to make right. sure that hey the you know, I can answer questions that might come around this time of night. I want to make sure there's not a loud train that goes by or, uh, you know, uh, I think the first property I ever stayed in, you know, laughably, it took us a month to launch those first two properties. You just want to make sure that everything was there in there uh, and realize uh, that I didn't have a wine bottle opener after all this. So, <laughs> of course. Uh, that was, that's one thing that sticks out is we always make sure to put that wine bottle opener in there after that. So there you go. Uh, again, really just, just, we wanted to experience it just like a guest would. And, um, and really that's the motivation for it, um, uh, for the, the properties that we pick out. Uh, I tell folks all the time, if my wife and daughter are coming from say the Atlanta area, a couple hours away after a long week of work, they're here for a dance competition. I want to make sure that they feel safe. They're comfortable. They didn't get here until 1030. They've got the codes that they need to access. They've got the, a well-lit area, mm -hmm. you know, um, again, I just want them to, to feel comfortable in an unfamiliar city. Absolutely. Josh, you, you get a few arbitrages sound like you've got about seven arbitrages. Then you started owning some properties and then you started to see that other people wanted you to manage for them. Um, some people don't want to do that. Some people say, Hey, I just, I just want to deal with the properties that I have. My arbitrages are my own properties. What would you say to them have been the benefits of opening up and managing other people, both financially and maybe what it's done for your business um, as a whole? You know, for us, we were already building the tools to be able to scale. Um, for our own purposes, uh, you know, the things like the, the, all the technology that you offer in the course, I love those sections, um, you know, going through there, uh, even use some of the discounts uh, there as well. But yeah. um, we were already building it at scale. It, it just, you know, it made a lot of sense for us to, you know, to be able to represent uh, other hosts. And, and quite honestly, that's how that I'm now connected with, um, you know, the real estate investment group, uh, or, or this specific firm, not, not the uh, networking meeting, two different things there. Uh, you know, we started managing for, uh, this, uh, this other set of property owners and, you know, they said, Josh, we, we love what you're doing. We obviously, we love the returns right now in short-term rental, um, you know, as part of your compensation, you know, we want you to come on with us in a full-time aspect. Uh, and, you know, you, you're doing a great job on the management side, but uh, you know, we really, you know, need some help as a COO. And, mm. and that's really, we've had an opportunity to, uh, through them, 
really gain equity in a lot of the properties that, that nice. we're purchasing now. And so uh, that's really kind of the easiest answer is that it, it's just, it's opened up more doors, uh, you know, for us in that regard. You always want to make sure that your time is valued. Um, you know, it's, you're building the tools to be successful. You want to make sure all your expenses are covered for, you know, those technology pieces that you add in per property. Uh, but really that, again, that, that your time is valued as well. So I would encourage folks, don't, don't, don't just throw a number out there uh, just to, you know, just to take on more properties. Yeah. Um, be selective. And, uh, and it really is about the right partnership as well with your property owners. Uh, that's something else that, uh, that, that doesn't need to be left unsaid. Pro you know, location is very important. Um, how the properties are, are decor, uh, set up and designed. Uh, but really it's gotta be the right relationship, uh, you know, with that, the right partner, uh, with that property owner as well. That's a great point too. And, you know, we can, we can, you know, get excited about getting equity in a property and, and all these new relationships and, you know, making 25% on, you know, a property that might be doing $10,000 in a month. All that is sounding really exciting. And especially when you don't have to invest any money into it, that's pretty, pretty awesome. But man, you just mentioned the right partnership too. the, the best property with the worst owner isn't worth it. Um, and, Absolutely. and I, I want to know from you, what are some of those maybe red flags that you start to see as you're vetting a potential client to maybe say like, okay, this is going to be a good fit or no, this person's going to be too high maintenance. I'm not going to, I'm not going to put that on my team. What, what are some of those red flags? You know, one of the easiest flags is, um, individuals who come to us and, Hey, I don't have a property yet, which is no problem, but, um, you know, I'm looking to, uh, looking at this area or maybe they do have a property, but, you know, here's the level that I want to take it to from a renovation standpoint, from a, a design standpoint. Uh, we want to make sure that they've got, uh, some liquidity as well to be able to cover, you know, issues that pop up, one of the things, I guess, one of the benefits to our company is that we're able to float a lot of these expenses that might pop up throughout the month. If, if there's a, you know, a larger maintenance call, we've got our own maintenance team on staff. We've got yeah. contractors that really can, uh, you know, build a property if we need to. But um, having said that, you know, we have seen some flags around, well, I, I think we can work with this. And it's like, you know what you can, it's just not going my portfolio. Yeah. Um, you know, so, uh, that's, and, and, and we have to, you know, and very pleasantly as politely as we can have that conversation. Um, you know, here's the things that we need to be able to do to, right. uh, fix it up. And we think that we can get you this rate, uh, this occupancy, this, this type of revenue per month. But, um, you know, at the same time, we're going to have, we're going to have to have an owner that plays ball with us that trusts the, you know, trust the process. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so I, I would say uh, those are just a few red flags on the front end that we've seen. And, um, you know, uh, outside of location, it's, Hey, I, I love what you're doing here. I, you know, and I just, uh, I think I'll let you run with this property and uh, come to us on the next one. Yeah. So what I'm kind of hearing is maybe an, an open checkbook and uh, a willingness to trust that you guys know what you're doing is maybe some of the, the key things that you're looking for in an owner. Sure. Uh, and and you know, we, everybody wants to know that obviously they're going to make a, uh, you know, a, a return on their investment. Obviously we don't offer any type of guarantees, uh, you know, that we're going to book this property. Uh, hey, this is what we've done countless times before we've we've had a few owners come to us from other operators hey i'm you're, you're doing what i'm like yeah I'm, you know <laughs> we've got that two bedroom one bath uh you know apartment complex pretty uh that floor plan down pretty pat we feel like we can get there uh you know with just within just a few hundred dollars from a furnishing budget as well as you know the revenue uh, it's just that's what we started out with several years ago and uh, but it, again it just um, it really comes down to them just being able to trust that we know um, and that we've got the experience to be able to design and 
and and do the marketing correctly and and go after the right type the right niche customer um you know to be able to bring in and again just grab that revenue perfect um last question here along with this real estate group helping you to build your portfolio uh were they also part of the help for building your team or was there a different route uh to you know with 50 properties i imagine your team is probably pretty extensive here. Um, so where, where are you getting them from? You know, uh, that team has been comprised of, um, folks within that real estate investment group, um, uh, getting referrals to, you know, again, a local handyman, uh, different cleaners. Um, as I mentioned, we've built a local Facebook group of, for, of short term operators that we share, you know, it gives the opportunity for different vendors to come in and advertise their cleaning service or their design services, maybe their photography. Uh, and so just just being in and really building the network uh, of short term operators, again, to encourage, uh, you know, folks to, you know, hey, we're all in this boat together. Uh, there's probably 175 folks, uh, uh, you know, within that group. Uh, we might as well bring in you know, the different vendors that we use, um, you know, give them an opportunity to work with more of us, um, as well as the BNI group, you know, uh, I think it, you know, word of mouth gets around for, uh, you know, different contractors and handymen as well. Um, I think we've got six now, if I'm not mistaken, and then we've got a, you know, a network of cleaners, uh, that we had been utilizing, decided it was, more beneficial to create our own cleaning team. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's still a work in progress. I think we've got, I don't know, roughly eight, uh, cleaners that work full-time for us now as well. So, uh, again, just, uh, it really starts, uh, you know, going back to the network and, and getting in front of these folks who, uh, could be several long-term investors, uh, long-term real estate investors, uh, who are used to, you know, dealing with this side of real estate out. All this revenue you're talking about is intriguing on the short term side. We might be interested in, in doing something with you there. So uh, really can't, uh, couldn't get very far without uh, certainly going through that, uh, the importance of networking for sure. Cool. Very nice. Josh, how can people connect with you, especially, you know, if someone's got a property over in Alabama that wants it managed by you, would love to have people reaching out. Yeah, so our website is dreamlinesuites.com, D-R-E-A-M-L-I-N-E-S-U-I-T-E-S.com. Uh, Josh at dreamlinesuites.com uh, is my email and um, be glad to, again, uh, be, a, be a free resource, uh, like we've mentioned, uh, to anybody wanting to, uh, you know, build their network and answer any questions we can. And, and again, uh, one of the reasons why we're here is so that we can learn from other top operators in the business. So certainly appreciative of, uh, of the opportunity you've created here for us. Awesome. Josh Fields, you're awesome. Congrats on all of your success. And thank you for joining us today on the Fearless Investor Podcast and helping our audience to conquer the world of short-term rentals. Thank you. Glad to be here, man. I appreciate your time. Thank you. DreamlineSuites.com. Go check him out. And if you want to email him once again, Josh says it's Josh at DreamlineSuites.com. That's going to do it for us here on the Fearless Investor Podcast, where we're always helping you to conquer the world of short-term rentals. We'll see you next time.